Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we're going to be talking about, of course, NVIDIA. Yesterday was NVIDIA's Q4 fiscal year 2024 earnings day. We have a brief update on that, but we're going to talk about why NVIDIA is such an important company going into 2024 and, of course, discuss the question that is on everyone's mind. What should I do with my NVIDIA stock if I already own it? And is the stock a buy if it's not in your portfolio yet? Let's go over a few highlights here first to build up to the answer to those questions. First off, $61 billion in revenue in this past year versus just shy of $27 billion the year prior. I think one of the biggest questions here is obviously NVIDIA's biggest customers have been the big cloud service providers and the big consumer internet businesses. Basically, the other six companies in the Magnificent Seven, especially Microsoft, Google, and Meta, the most powerful data center operators on the planet, filling up their data center real estate with NVIDIA hardware. The biggest hint we got here, Casey, that at the very least, these cloud data center operators were going to at least keep their spending on equipment even was in their own earnings reports. We saw stable, if not slightly growing, 5% expectations for capital expenditures from Microsoft, Google, Alphabet, and Meta in 2024. That's where a lot of NVIDIA's hardware has been flowing. So that's a good indicator. Arista Networks, also a good indicator. They said 10 12% growth for their data center networking and engineering operation. And a lot of enterprises now swooping into the market to get their cut of NVIDIA hardware. So will the company be able to hang on to this level of revenue? At the rate we're looking at, Casey, if NVIDIA comes in shy of $100 billion in revenue in calendar year 2024, fiscal year 2025 for NVIDIA, and comes short of $50 billion in operating profit, it's probably going to be a big disappointment. Based on that metric, the stock trades for about 35 times fiscal year 2025, calendar year 2024 profits, earnings. Is the stock expensive? Yeah, it's not a cheap stock. But based on what we're looking at for this year, is it reasonably valued? I, I think it's closer to reasonably valued than a lot of people would care to admit. I think that's maybe the first thing we need to take a look at. And then we have some balance sheet information that kind of backs up the fact that core customers definitely have the firepower to keep spending on this stuff if they deem fit. Looking at the balance sheet for all of the seven companies in the Magnificent Seven, Google at $111 billion, Amazon $87 billion, Microsoft $81 billion, Apple $73 billion, Meta $65 billion, Tesla $29 billion, and NVIDIA $26 billion. Altogether, these seven companies just generated nearly $350 billion in free cash flow in the last year alone. And this is the real reason that these businesses are going to remain so powerful for many years to come. There is a ton of cash on their balance sheets nearly half of a trillion dollars ready to be deployed. So estimates right now in AI training is that NVIDIA holds about 90% of that part of the market share. But when it comes to inference, that's after the AI language model has been trained, the inference market share that NVIDIA has, Jimson mentioned that it's about 40%. And he said that's estimating conservative. I don't think anybody knew it was going to be quite that high, but it makes sense because even other companies that do AI inference chips have reported some lackluster revenue. So it's very obvious that NVIDIA is the main shareholder of this market. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. And I think a lot of fuss has been made over like Google's TPUs, the tensor processor units, it being developed for AI inference. Sure. Of, of course they are. But I think we have to remember the TPU was originally developed. They started developing that apparently in 2014, 2015 with Broadcom. And the original use case was not accelerated computing, aka AI. Again, whenever you hear people throwing this word AI around accelerated compute, that's what we're talking about. The tensor processing unit, the TPU, the TPU was originally developed not for accelerated computing, but for Google's internet search business to help organize the massive amount of data on the internet, 
to help make recommendations to users doing search. Not some of the more specific accelerated use cases we're looking at now involving generative AI and all of the, the new software services that are only really just beginning to pop up. So uh, of course, NVIDIA would have this much accelerated compute market share for inference. I believe that's probably a conservative estimate at 40%. Does it matter though? I don't know. Probably not. Another thing though that we're looking at here, Casey, is a lot of folks think that a lot of this inference work will move to the device, to the very absolute edge of the network, to our PCs, our laptops, our smartphones. Yeah, that's going to happen. It's already happening. We talked a lot about Qualcomm doing it, but let's not forget NVIDIA has been doing accelerated compute for PC and laptop since the beginning. Most other companies were ignoring that market until all of a sudden where there's a lot more use cases other than just video games. Of course, NVIDIA is already in position to capture a big part of that market share too in PC and laptop when you think about AI inference done on the network edge. And, and it makes sense. You can see that in the numbers, the year over year growth numbers for their gaming, AKA PC laptop business and the professional visualization NVIDIA already in place and ready for a resumption of growth, probably highly cyclical growth, but growth nonetheless in these particular end markets as well. Within data center sales, networking hardware was up 3x year over year and compute up 5x in Q4. When we're talking about hardware for the data centers, we also have to talk about software because you have to have software to run these extremely complex systems. And so NVIDIA AI enterprise software is now over a billion dollars per year. And Jensen said that the cost is $4,500 per GPU per year. NVIDIA AI Enterprise hardware and software is going to continue to be a very significant part of the business. Yeah, that's right. And this is, I talked about this a bit already, Casey. Intel and AMD aren't simply going to just catch up technologically. They're behind in developing the full software stack involved with accelerated computing. And again, it's because NVIDIA has been doing this for years. Some of the newer entrants are just now starting to figure out that they maybe missed the boat and they need to paddle off the dock to keep pace here for a while. Will they pick up market share going forward? Yeah, it's inevitable that they probably will pick up some market share when NVIDIA is coming off of a base of 90% plus of AI training and possibly 40% plus in AI inference, but does it matter to NVIDIA? I, I think they're going to continue to grow this year. Again, base case, 100 billion in revenue, 50 billion in, in operating profit. It would be disappointing if they fell short of it at this particular juncture, because that's the annualized outlook for the first quarter. One other point here too, Casey, talk a lot about NVIDIA becoming a platform and having very powerful network effects. We pulled this quote from the Q&A session. Jensen Wong made some interesting points here. Yes, Jensen Wong said that they have an excellent ecosystem with OEMs, ODMs, and CSPs, and very importantly, end markets. What NVIDIA is really unique about is that we bring our customers, we bring our partners, CSPs, and OEMs. We bring them customers. The biology companies, the healthcare companies, financial services, AI developers, large language model developers, autonomous vehicle companies, robotics, all of these companies, startups or large companies work on NVIDIA's platform and they support them directly. And they can also bring the customer to a CSP at the same time. So they're getting a twofer. Yeah, it's a powerful network effect. There are so many developers working within the NVIDIA ecosystem now on hardware and software that Sometimes when a non-tech company comes to NVIDIA and says, we need help developing this technology, NVIDIA can simply just make an introduction to someone who's already working on the solution that they need. Really, really powerful business model here. And I think that's the biggest underrated piece of this business at this point. AMD and Intel are not quite at that level, probably an understatement there, not quite at that level as far as platform business goes. 
Let's talk about what everybody really wants to know. What should they do with their NVIDIA stock? What are we doing with our NVIDIA stock? And if you don't own it, should you buy it now? Well, we're holding, right? The last time we really bought was October, November, 2022. That was the last time we made a really big purchase. And we're happy to continue holding. There will come a time where we're going to need to rebalance our portfolio and pull some profit out of this one because NVIDIA at this point, after owning it for many, many years, is far and away our largest holding. But the time to rebalance is not now. Maybe we should start with those who like don't own it yet. I think our, our, our standard shtick here, Casey, and it's what we ourselves do, is we build positions in companies slowly, gradually, over time. Again, NVIDIA is it ludicrously expensive, doesn't look like it anymore. It's not a value though either by any stretch of the imagination. So there's a lot of value in being patient and building a position over time. We're holding. We really ultimately recommend that you build a position in a company, especially one like this, over time. What about those who have been trading NVIDIA stock, buying and selling the stock? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we get that question a lot as of late. I think the real question that's being asked is, should I sell now and take the profit? I, I think that's ultimately the gist of this question. If not, back up to, you just said, Casey, build a position over time. If you're trading it and you're looking for an exit, here's the thing. Very quick mini rant here, folks. If you're trading this thing and you're looking to get out, get your profit out. Congrats. You beat the algorithms. You beat the big AI machines that we're talking about right now from NVIDIA that can compute countless trading scenarios in the time it will take me to utter this very sentence. You won. You got lucky. If you generated some significant alpha market outperformance with your trade, congratulations. But don't give your alpha away. Take your profit and consider dumping it into a high-performance index like Vanguard Growth or Vanguard IT ETF, VUG or VGT. Because I think this is where a lot of people that trade go wrong is maybe you hit pay dirt, you get a lucky trade, and then you continue trading it as if that's a sustainable process. And usually it's not for most traders, especially not for retail traders. Statistics are not working in your favor here. This is why brokers, especially a lot of startup brokers, are dumping a lot of marketing to influencers to talk to you about trading. Who do you think is going to win this battle? Look, your most valuable asset is your time. The only thing you need to do to get time to work on your side is to be patient and to have the self-control to realize that, that you won a victory and pull the profit out and stick it in one of those high performance indices. Stash it away for the long term. Don't give your alpha away. Don't turn around and give it away to the algorithms. So I, th I don't know. I think that's the gist of this question that we keep getting is, should we buy it? Should we sell it? This is a trading question. This is not what we do here. If you generated alpha from a short-term trade and you have no intention on holding for the long term, take it, but don't give it away. Hold it for the long term put it in a place where you're going to get some solid long-term growth. Okay, there you have it. That's our take on what we're going to be doing with our NVIDIA stocks in the coming quarter. We'll, of course, update you with any changes that we make in our plan. And, of course, if you have any questions, you can hit us up in the comments or over on our Discord channel where you can talk about NVIDIA all day long, if you'd like. Also, quick preview. Friday, we will be releasing... Uh, a short update on Palo Alto Networks, and we will finally be debuting our cybersecurity industry flowchart. So if you've been wondering why we still haven't gotten that out, I swear we've been working on it, but we're going to do the first reveal when we talk about Palo Alto Networks, the big industry pure play, and their not so great quarter Friday. All right, very good. If you have not yet subscribed to Chip Stock Investor, make sure you hit that subscribe button now and have notifications enabled. And we will see you all very soon. Hope you're having a great day. Take care.